Okay, we are working on lesson 6.5 now. We're gonna do two videos for this lesson. Uh, first one, I'm just gonna teach a couple theorems. There's really three of them. One of them has a converse, so we're kinda of looking at four, but there's three basic ideas. So the first video is just gonna show you the theorems. I'm gonna write them out for you. And then in the second video, we're gonna do a bunch of examples of them. So our first one is called the triangle proportionality theorem. You can see that written out here. Obviously, by its name, it has to do with proportions. Okay, it's pretty obvious. Okay, so what does the triangle proportionality theorem say? So let's write this out. Like I said, I'll show you a quick picture of it. You can kind of see a little bit of that picture over there off to the side. All right, and then we're going to do more examples in the second video. So here we go. Triangle proportionality theorem says if A line, let me get my pen to work. All right, there we go. If A line is parallel to one side of a triangle, then, all right, so let's look at that picture real quick. Do you see how I have this one side, or this line here that's inside the triangle and it's parallel to this side? That's what we're talking about. So if I get this and it's parallel to that. Now, some of you say, well, that's kind of like a mid-segment. Yeah, it is, except that the mid-segment had to be right in the middle of the sides. This one can be here, it can be way over here, it can be way up here, it can be anywhere as long as it's still parallel. A mid-segment is just a special version of this. Okay, so this has a little more possibilities than just a mid-segment, okay? All right, if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle, then that line divides the other two sides, okay? It doesn't touch one of them because it's parallel to it, but it divides the other two sides proportionally. That's where our word finally comes into play, proportionally, okay? So let's take a look at this picture right here. So if I get this right here parallel to this, so if a line is parallel to one side, then, now, last time I said that line divides the other two sides proportionally. Here, I'm actually going to show you what the proportion looks like. So, this is really simple. All you do is look at the picture and you set the proportion up exactly the way it looks. So, you tell me, what does it look like? It looks like W is over what? Well, it looks like W is over Y. And then it looks like X is over z. And what do we put between our fractions when we do proportions? We put an equal sign, and that's it. Now, if it's tilted this way, okay, let's say it kind of looks like that, then it kind of looks like w is over x, and it looks like y is over z. Okay, that's fine, you can set it up that way, it'll still work. Well, what if I turn it upside down, Mr. Oates? z over x equals y over w. Okay, it'll still work. All right, well, what if I do it this way? X over W equals Z over Y. Okay, it'll still work. Okay, it doesn't matter which way you look at it, it's still going to work. What you cannot do is put W over Z and X over Y. You also cannot put W over Y and then do this one backwards and put Z over X. You have to stay consistent. That's the main idea. All right, you got to stay consistent. All right, so that's the first theorem. Okay, the second one is the triangle proportionality converse theorem. Okay, so let me zoom back out a little bit. Triangle proportionality converse theorem. All right, so converse, remember, just switches the order up on us. So this one said, if a line is parallel, then the sides are divided proportionally. So this one's going to say, if a line divides two sides of a triangle, proportionally, then that line is parallel to the third side. Okay, the third side being the one that it doesn't intersect. The one side it doesn't intersect. Okay? So go ahead and get that written down, and then we're going to take a look at this picture over here. All right. Remember, pause the video if you need to. If it takes you too long to write it down, just pause it. Okay, let's go over here and look at this picture. 
So this one, we're going to do it backwards. Remember last time I said if a line is parallel, then I can set up the proportion. So let me zoom in a little bit on this again. All right, so on this one, it's going to look more like this. If, well, what does it look like? A over B equals C over D. Or, once again, if you want to turn your paper a little bit, B over D, A over C. D over C, B over A. C over A, D over B. Any of those will work. Remember, you can't do A over B and then turn around and do D over C. You can't do A over D and do C over B. Okay? You can't cross like this. Eventually, we're going to cross multiply. Okay? So if A over B equals C over D, then we have parallel lines. Okay? Remember, this is our symbol for parallel. So then we have parallel lines. Well, which lines? This one and this one. Okay? These ones would end up being parallel. All right? That's all the triangle proportionality converse theorem says. Okay, let's look at the third theorem. This theorem doesn't have a name. It's theorem 6.6. .6, okay? That's all the book says, theorem 6.6. .6. All right? So if three parallel lines are cut by two transversals, then they divide those transversals proportionally. If three parallel lines are cut by two transversals, then they divide those transversals proportionally. Okay, let's take a look at the picture. Do I have three parallel lines? Yep, I've got these shaded triangles. Remember, that means parallel. I have transversal number one. It crosses all the parallel lines, and I have transversal number two. PQRS. Well, this says it divides the transversals. So as long as my letters are on the transversals, we're good. Divides them how? Proportionally. So all I have to do is set up a proportion. So if you look at this picture, how do you think you'd set up this proportion? Don't make it difficult. Just set it up the way it looks. P over R equals Q over S. Okay, that's all you got to do. P over R equals Q over S. Well, Mr. Oates, could I work sideways? P over Q? Sure. P over Q equals R over S. Well, could I do Q over S equals R over P? No. You didn't stay consistent. Q over S means you have to do P over R. Okay. Now, if you wanted to do S over Q, that's fine. Then you just have to do R over P. So there's a bunch of different ways you can set it up. If you remember, I mentioned this earlier in another lesson. There are 24 different ways to set up a proportion. Eight of them are correct. 16 of them are wrong. All right, last theorem, 6.7. All right, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can fit the words in a little bit better, and then we'll come back in for a picture. All right, so theorem 6.7. If a ray bisects one angle of a triangle, then it divides the opposite side into two segments that are proportional to the original two sides. Okay. If a ray bisects one angle of triangle, then it divides the opposite side into two segments that are proportional to the original two sides. In other words, the original two sides of the triangle. If you want to add that in there, that's fine. Okay, so let's look at the picture. So I have an angle bisector. This ray is going to split this side into two pieces. Those two pieces have to be proportional to these two original sides. So all you're going to do is set up a proportion exactly the way it looks. So if I zoom in here a little bit, okay, what proportion do you think you'd write down? J over K equals H over I. 
And once again, you can do it a couple different ways if you want. You could do J over H. And if you do J over H, you need to do K over I. All right? You could turn it all upside down like this. I over H equals K over J. That's going to work as well. All right? So there you go. Last theorem there. Copy that down if you need to. If you didn't get it all down, remember, pause the video anytime you want to. Okay, second video, we're going to do a bunch of examples of these. All right, so make sure you watch both videos. That's it for the first one. Four theorems, or it's really three theorems plus one converse. Okay, make sure you watch both videos, though, for lesson 6.5.